I've never seen a time where all the threats, or so many of the threats, are all elevated all at exactly the same time. So blinking red lights analogy about 9-11, all the lights were blinking red before 9-11, apparently, obviously all of us missed it. Would you say that there's multiple blinking red lights out there? I see blinking lights everywhere I turn. An ominous warning from FBI Director Christopher Wray on the threat of a terrorist attack on U.S. soil this holiday season, as a senior Hamas official is now calling for violence against American and British interests across the world as retaliation for supporting Israel's war against Hamas in Gaza. This amidst a surge of foreigners flooding the U.S. southern border. 10,000 people in a single day just this week. Some on the U.S. terrorist watch list. Customs and Border Protection sources telling Fox News over 535,000 migrants have already been apprehended for this fiscal year, with an additional 60,000 plus listed as gotaways. And again, the fiscal year began in November. As we first reported exclusively on Friday on Mornings with Maria on Fox Business, Customs and Border Patrol agents are being warned to be extra vigilant after the Mexican military seized 10 improvised explosive devices, or IEDs, at the border, as well as an armed individual carrying an AK-47, among other weapons, in the Tucson sector during a cartel gunfight on the Mexican side of the border. Joining me right now in a Sunday Morning Futures exclusive is the chairman of the House Homeland Security Committee, Tennessee Congressman Mark Green. Mr. Chairman, thanks very much for being here this morning. Should we be worried about a terrorist attack on U.S. soil? Absolutely, we should be worried. I had uh, Director Ray in front of my committee for our worldwide threats briefing, and he clearly said, you know, that the open border has created both an increased risk for his agents who are now hunting these individuals inside the United States and certainly an increased risk to the American people. And he's honestly, he expressed a real fear and worry about what, what's happening in, inside our country. 294 terrorist watch list folks since this president came to office, compare that to only 11 during the entire Trump administration. Well, that's incredible. What are you doing about it? So what we're doing is an investigation into Mayorkas and, and, and what's happening at the border, the increased risk to Americans, getting that to the colleagues that I have that we've got to convince to, to actually get rid of Mayorkas. He's, he's derelict in his duty. He's broken the laws of the United States that have passed Congress. He's lied to Congress. This guy needs to go. And I've got to convince eight Republicans I think we can do that. That's what we're working on right now. Well, that's what I want to talk to you about, because Marjorie Taylor Greene came out with her bill to come to the floor to ensure that you had the process in place to impeach Alejandro Mayorkas. And eight Republicans voted against that, partly on process. They wanted you to bring the bill to the floor. Will you do it? Yeah, absolutely. We're going to have about three or four hearings in January, and then we're going to mark up the impeachment articles that have been written. There are probably about four or five different members who've brought impeachment articles, really rushing the thing to the floor without a due process. And that's why I think many of those eight voted no. And I've spoken to all eight. Most of them just want a, a due process, you know, to happen. And we've been doing that now for several months. That investigation wraps up this month, and then we'll, we'll do a proceeding in January. Okay, so we're expecting you to move to impeach Alejandro Mayorkas in January then? Well, the Democrats actually referred it themselves back when Marjorie brought that motion to the floor. The Democrats themselves actually referred it back to our committee. So it gives our committee the authority to do just that. Let's talk about some of the deportations or lack of deportations. Yeah. What can you tell us in terms of ICE and whether or not the, uh, the department is being honest when they say the border is secure? Well, they're definitely not being honest about a secure border. But I think if you drill into, I mean, clearly the border is wide open. And no one, even Democrats, you listen to Eric Adams and all those talk about the crisis it's causing in New York City and the, the Democrat governor of Massachusetts who's talking about a crisis. But the real issue here, I think what really shows intent on Mayorkas is the fall in removals. Uh, in 2019, ICE removed 267,000 people. In 2021, the first year of this president, it was 59,000. I mean, that's like a 5X decrease in deportations. Meanwhile, millions more have come into the country. I mean, it shows their intent is basically to fundamentally change the population of the United States 
and I believe to empower the Democrat Party into perpetuity. That's their intent. I think that's a, a, a you know a misunderstanding of where Latinos are voting these days. But that has to be their intent, and they've put the American people at risk: terrorist attacks, fentanyl. Uh, drug cartels. You mentioned the IEDs. I mean, this is a huge risk to the American people. They're willing to accept in order to change the electorate. Well, is there no sense of urgency whatsoever? Look what you're telling us right now, live. Yes, we should be worried about a terrorist attack on U.S. soil. Yes, we've got would-be terrorists coming through the border. Yes, we've got drugs and human trafficking happening in plain sight. And wh where's the urgency here? So we've already passed a bill, Maria, back seven, eight months ago that would fix all of this. And the Democrat Senate is sitting on their backside doing nothing. I would love to see uh, them come to an agreement that actually puts border security policy on the supplemental. But we're not going to put more money into their hands. I'll give you an example. We gave them $1.9 billion more dollars to do searches at the crossing sites. They're only searching 2% of civilian vehicles and 17% of commercial vehicles. It is absurd to think that if we hand Joe Biden more billions of dollars, he's going to actually do more border security. So what we're doing is trying to convince the Senate to actually pass a bill that will work, which we, by the way, passed six, seven months ago. Well, I mean, also absurd is all these meetings that Joe Biden has with Xi Jinping as Xi Jinping undermines America. I've got to get your take on all of these Chinese nationals coming into America through the wide open border. Because we're looking at the pictures, Mr. Chairman. They look like engineers. They look like military-aged men. They're wearing collared shirts. They're coming through the border. They certainly do not appear to be people escaping from persecution. So what can you tell us about this 1,000% increase in the number of Chinese nationals getting apprehended at the southern border? Sure, Maria. I mean, think about it this way. The most we've ever had before was 1,800 in a year. And then this last year, it's been 24,000. And these are military-aged folks. You have to consider that this is somehow a strategic plan of the Chinese Communist Party. You can't buy a plane ticket if your social credit score doesn't accomplish a certain level in China. So the people who are leaving China and coming to... Ecuador and then our El Salvador and then coming into the United States across the southern border, the Chinese Communist Party knows about it. And, and they're probably, I mean, we have to consider this. This is what Russia did when it invaded Ukraine. Now, I'm not suggesting that China's trying to invade the United States. That's absurd. But if we're going to defend Taiwan, a division's worth of people here observing our military installations, observing our railhead movements of military forces to, to, to help defend Taiwan, potentially sabotaging those you know, railheads and things like that, where we upload military supplies. I mean, that, that has to be considered. Yet, Mayorkas doesn't seem to care. So, hold on. Russia did this with Ukraine, and, and you're saying you think that Xi Jinping is directing some of these people to come to America to later become saboteurs? Just explain that for no. us. Yeah, I don't have the uh, intelligence to suggest that that's a definite plan, but it, you, you have to consider it as a potential course of action. When Russia invaded Ukraine, for years before, they sent people into Ukraine. We called them the little green men. And they went in, they set up a residence, they lived there, and they became the saboteurs when Putin actually pulled the trigger and invaded. That very much could be the potential here. I mean, why go from 1,800 in a year that. to 24,000? Mm hmm Okay. We will leave it there. We, you said a minute ago you're going to have hearings on impeachment and you're going to bring an impeachment uh, in January. We're going to be watching that, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. House, House Homeland Security Committee Chairman, Congressman Mark Green. Thank you, sir. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilney. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.